Yeah. What do you give us? Espolion. Espolion. Red Posado. Espolion. Oh, man. Eric it's doesn't take his have? shots with we, lime like a psychopath. We also didn't have lime mm. like a psychopath. Everyone's go. Good job. a psychopath. That's the kind of episode this needs to be. <laughs> just a bunch of psychopaths talking for an hour and a half. Who else would start a <laughs> podcast? Welcome back to the Shaken Not Scared podcast. Here with you as always, your hosts, Eric and Vivi. Today we're going to be talking about the 1983 movie Cujo, directed by Louis Teague. But before we get into that, we have guests. You didn't ask me how I was first. Well, we have to ask them how they are, and then we'll say how we are. <laughs> no one cares how we are. They've heard about us for no, weeks. No, listen, it's our show. You ask me first, and then we get to the guests. <laughs> okay, Vivi, how are you? I'm excited because we have guests. Oh, See, good. I was getting to it. <laughs> So today we are bringing on probably the only people who listen to this show. Yay! <laughs> Our friends from Boston that we always talk about, Francisco yeah. and Brenda. Yay! Yay! Do you, you guys, guys want to introduce yourselves? <laughs> <laughs> My name is Brenda from Boston. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Francisco from Boston. We're originally from Chicago area, though. <laughs> yeah, we all met in college. We did. Well, they were my friends first, okay? Francisco was the first love of your life because he was your favorite (laughs) college roommate. I creepily took a picture of you the first time we hung out after you had not talked to me for a long time, and I sent it to him. It was just a picture of you on the sofa with your back turned to the camera, and I was like, look who's here. (laughs) (laughs) Just just to show you how close we are. (laughs) (laughs) We brought them on today because... We kind of mentioned in the past, we have a book club with them, and we just happened to be reading Cujo and thought, hey, why not turn this into an episode and also talk about the book while we talk about the movie? Because they are very different. They're very different. I (laughs) love the book. The movie was not so good. Yeah, I I agree. The book was freaking amazing. And like the movie just, it, it captures some of the main, you know, aspects of it, but I'd say very different overall. Let's ask them about their creepy content. Creepy content, we recently watched Wreck. Well, Francisco had already watched it, but it was my first time. Yeah, it was the first, but I hadn't watched it in actually around probably the, around the same time you guys watched it. when it, Right around the time it was released. So I yeah. did not remember much. So kind of listening to your podcast kind of re-inspired me to watch it and tell Brenda to watch it because I really liked it when I when I did back then. Which what did I just watch it because I needed... I wanted to hear the <laughs> podcast, so. So we forced you. Good. We're achieving our goals by forcing people to watch movies. Yeah. <laughs> Did you like it, though? It was Ooh, very long pause. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. oh, no. I thought the main character chick was very annoying. That's a common review of her. Did you guys watch it in English or Spanish? Spanish. In Spanish. Yeah. Oh, okay, nice. good. Yeah, because it's, it's way more worse in English. <laughs> It's way more annoying in English if you thought the Spanish was annoying. Oh, oh, oh I yeah. should make you watch it then. So I guess two other things would be the main thing. I guess last week we got we got into a quiet place. Finally, we watched the first one the night before we went to watch the second one in the movies. First time back in the movies since what three since months the, before quarantine. I love the second one. It was better than the first one. We haven't seen it yet. Yeah. We're like really behind. And wow. then this happened. <laughs> <laughs> and this then is the ending. ending. All right, everybody who's listening to this and hasn't seen it, y'all can drop now. We're just going to continue to talk about Quiet Place 2. Forget <laughs> Cujo. <laughs> we do want to go see it. Yeah, we are behind, like Don't I said. Don't know if we're going to go in person. Remember to turn off your phones or oh, no. take <laughs> off any alarms that might sound in the middle of the movie. Yeah, some guy, some really annoying guy in there. Some like, asshole. His phone just went off. You know, it's a quiet place, guy. Turn off your damn phone. Like, come on. We don't talk about who the guy was, though. I was like, really, babe? Really? <laughs> Scrambling to get my phone and turn it off. Like, Getting oh, even man. louder. We forgot how to act in public. (laughs) So another creepy fact, we actually live in an apartment building that is right next to, so our backyard is basically a cemetery. And funny enough, when we came to see it, we were on the second floor. So the, the guy that was showing us the apartment was saying, well, you know, some people may just not like the apartment and this and that. We're yeah, like, he's like, the oh. only negative thing is it faces the cemetery. <laughs> like, um, and we're like, negative? <laughs> negative? What the heck you talking about, bro? You're we're not sh- charging extra for this? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. We're like, we'll take it. <laughs> When was my there... mom found out, she's like, you're crazy. I'm just like, um, I'm looking outside every night. I'm hoping to see something. Was there a <laughs> discount for the fact that the backdrop is a cemetery? It's, you know? it's definitely cheaper than like the, mm-hmm. the higher level apartments. Yeah. and the, We didn't want to show so much 
enthusiasm that that's what's the backdrop hoping for a discount <laughs> but i think i think they're cheaper the ones that face the cemetery are cheaper yeah. than the ones that face boston city right and then so. the lower guys you are, that's the awesome well. so it's, yeah it's, it's awesome <laughs> so Wait, why would i want to see the skyline of boston <laughs> Ugh, people cemetery, yeah. cemetery. <laughs> what do i want a lakefront view for if i could see just a bunch of graves a wave of bodies not water <laughs> <laughs> when we got married in salem very close to boston we actually stayed with them for a couple of days and it was so fun because I thought everything was a haunting. <laughs> I would hear like yes. kids crying in the apartment and I'm like, ghost. <laughs> the reason I asked the thing about the rent was because on Twitter yesterday, somebody made a joke. It was like realtor. So 14 people were individually killed here on this property and it was like white family sold. I'm moving in tomorrow. I responded and was like, have you seen Amityville Horror? 400K plus house lakefront the boat has a house multi-story building basement <laughs> tons of land just turned into a two hundred and fifty thousand dollar house i was like bro i'm moving in today i don't even <laughs> shit how many people died in this house Maybe yeah, doesn't the, agree, more people, but I the, more, the more people that died the bigger discount cool okay. <laughs> this is the only way millennials can afford a house mm -hmm. <laughs> they will ignore the ghost so if that's all you guys got what about you baby i have not been able to watch a ton i am listening to this podcast actually it's called the horror virgin it is a similar premise to our show but no alcohol it's a group of three friends and one of them like really hates horror movies so they make him watch the horror movies and gives his reaction thus the virgin thus the virgin and i try not to listen to movies that we plan we're gonna cover because i don't want them to like influence our influence jokes. my opinion I, I hate when i'm watching a movie with you and i love the movie and you're like this is so lame and then i have to change my opinion of the movie <laughs> yeah that's been pretty fun what about you so i told you about this guy that i found on tiktok i don't know if you guys have seen him but this guy bishop james long is his handle on tiktok he's like a priest i'm assuming bishop he gets sent a bunch of videos of paranormal stuff that people put on tiktok he watches them and then responds with his take and whether he believes it's real or not so it's kind of cool because i watched like a handful of his videos one night just watching for like an hour or two at night and i yeah i don't get freaked out but it, it was funny because a couple of the videos he covers i had already seen and i was like well, i wonder if that's real or like or if it's not real i wonder how they did it you know because sometimes it's just so realistic just so cinematic there was one that i thought was pretty fake but he was like oh no 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 you need to like call me right now i need to visit your house and i was like whoa okay that one's the most fake one that you've covered so far but he's a priest he knows something you don't know yeah he's like speaking of watching things at night you scared the shit out of me two nights ago for no reason i just walked in like a normal person no 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 no, no you did not <laughs> i think i was watching some like analysis of horror movies because i don't get enough of them i was like falling asleep watching that it was like four in the morning because i was editing because you were editing and and you just walked in. Okay, yes, he did just walk in, but that was enough to like freak me the hell out. You were breathing so heavy. I like yelled at you for walking into our bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was so scary because I was in that in between state of like not awake and half asleep. And then just Eric like makes so much noise. He kicks the door down every time he goes to bed. So I was like, oh my God, you said I was almost crying. <laughs> you were, that's what I'm saying. You were like, <laughs> <laughs> you were the one who was scary. I should have been scared of you. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, what, what's your other creepy content? <laughs> so I started listening to this other show, another podcast called Tea and Terror. They're pretty cool. Unlike us who are alcoholics, they talk about tea. They mention a couple of different kinds of teas that they enjoy. And they also bring up other kinds of nightmare fuel. That's that's what they say. Nightmare fuel, it's true crime, paranormal stories, and also urban legends. They cover a couple at a time, so it's kind of cool. Uh, so shout out to them. The other show we've been covering is Invincible. Oh, yeah. You guys should watch this, actually. It's kind of fucked. <laughs> <laughs> I it's don't... fucked up. Watch it. I mean, it's not creepy. It's a super. It's just show. like gory. Yeah, it's a good show. You guys should check it out. Well, you got me with the gore. So oh I'm yeah. Here. <laughs> yeah, Brenda's here for the oh, gore. Oh, it's fucked up. Yeah. Now, is that similar to? Are you guys familiar with The Boys on Amazon Prime as well? That's no, cool. we want to. You guys have seen it. I don't think you saw, but I, I saw the first season, and that's you know kind of getting into not not really gory but it, it kind of picks up the darker side of or what they would assume to be the darker side of superheroes 
Yeah, yeah. this show is kind of similar. It, it's animated. Just yeah. check it out, guys, because we've been binging it. Last but not least, I have the most horrifying, creepy content of all. Oh, yeah? Y'all know that Vivi almost replaced me at Jewel today? <laughs> oh, no! Oh, man. <laughs> yes. So I go to get a cart. Vivi waited. Per usual, she waits for me to go get the cart. I'm I back. wait inside because I'm just like standing in the way and people are like crashing into me. So I'm like, I'm gonna wait inside off to the side when you come back. Right before this, I noticed this guy wearing sweatpants, a black t-shirt, and he's got like big puffy hair. Curly hair. Curly hair. I was like, it's hot out. Why is this guy wearing so much clothes? I walk in. I need him to be more naked. <laughs> yeah, like me, because I was wearing a sleeveless <laughs> shirt and shorts. So I go get my car. The guy also grabbed a car. At the same time. But ahead of me, walked into the store, and I see Vivi turn quickly and walk next to him into the store. And I'm looking at her like, no. That it was can't embarrassing. Be true. She's. <laughs> Kind of looked back again, stopped, acted like sh nothing happened. And I was like, did you just think he was me? <laughs> okay, I acted like nothing happened, but the I knew literal Eric saw the whole thing. <laughs> the literal disrespect. And he wasn't even worried that I was about to go off with some stranger. He was more like, this guy looked, no offense to this guy, terrible. He looks nothing like me. I had no sleeves on. I was like, I have all my tattoos showing. This guy was completely untattooed. She's like, well, he was wearing the same thing you wear every day. Literally, Eric, <laughs> every day wears sweatpants and a black t-shirt. They're usually all black clothing. And I just kind of looked out of the corner of my eye. I'm like, yeah, that's my husband. Kept walking. I'm like, oh no, that is not my husband. <laughs> I think he kind of looked at you too like, who are you? He's like, this bitch. <laughs> who are you? Because I was walking next to him and he was like, you're in my way. <laughs> really I was that, So he actually noticed when you enter the grocery store there's like a whole bunch of produce in the middle of the store so i was trying to walk to like those center displays that are on sale i think mm -hmm. is what he thought he was probably like bitch i'm like trying to cross <laughs> you're in my way <laughs> and you're in my way so we i think that's what he thought uh, but eric uh, was watching from behind him like this bitch is about to go i didn't even off say anything him. i just looked at her like what is wrong with you <laughs> <laughs> anyway <laughs> has has Ben ever done that to you francisco or is she a good wife <laughs> oh, we're playing that game. Okay. Oh man. Uh, well, she's trying to get into a bunch of different cars. That we're oh, okay. Oh, okay. See, see, I'm not the only one. She's like, "Is this one? That looks nothing like my car." No, oh, no. Damn. Okay, I feel a little better. Thank uh -huh. you, Brenda. Well, at least you confused the car, not the literal person. I wasn't either. really looking at him, okay, uh -huh. and I like literally realized it. I said, "Is that what you're into? Is that what you're into?" People who don't look like me. <laughs> but anyway, that's it for creepy content. Let's talk about this drink because it's uh, probably really watered down by now. Oh, no. <laughs> so I'm going to call this Bar Dog Sour because the recipe is a apparently a New York whiskey sour. It is a whiskey sour with red wine on top. The recipe calls for like a sweet red wine, but I'm not a big fan of sweet red. So we went with the Cabernet. And then I just told Brenna and Francisco how to make it because Francisco is kind of the resident bartender over there. I always say that one day me, Francisco, and Eric are going to have a, a drink Brenda? off. No, Brenda's <laughs> going to judge. She's going to pass out by the first drink. She's like, everything's amazing. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> but really, <Yeah>. though. <laughs> but if you guys want to go ahead and try it. Yes. It looks pretty. Finally. It looks really pretty. I'll try yours after because mine's got mixed. Yeah, Francisco did an upside down sour. I haven't showed you guys. It just started like diffusing all together and mixed up. It kind of reminds me of a snake bite when you put the beer mm. at the bottom and then you put the stout at the top. Mm. It, I still I haven't so had one of those and I'm upset, but everyone's tried it. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. What do you guys think? I still haven't gotten to the whiskey sour part, but the wine <laughs> is pretty good. I like the wine, yeah. Drinking more. And I like that the wine had the a picture of a mm. dog in the label that Bibi found. They make uh, an annual donation to their local wine country animal rescue so that's oh, pretty nice that's more reason cool. to buy this label they have different oh. kinds too they have like a pinot noir and stuff like that oh they're gonna say different dogs i'm sure they have dogs too we should make a wine with loki's face on it oh 100 percent. when we like blow up and it's just gonna be teeth it's just gonna be teeth in the label <laughs> teeth with an f we can put teeth, a dog on it yeah. too and benny oh yeah <laughs> loki would be the cabernet benny will be the pinot noir and <laughs> doug will be the merlot yeah exactly well <laughs> Would rating? you guys rate it? You didn't give me your opinion. I no. was trying to just chug through the wine to get yeah, to the Yeah, me too. Part. I'm kind of yeah. starting to get it. You guys wanted me to give you the description of my yes. mixed up drink. <laughs> <laughs> With it already mixed. So, so mine's all mixed up, just naturally all mixed. In case you're bad at layering? Yes, exactly. In case you're like me and cannot layer. it's So you used to get the wine taste, obviously. It reminds me of a whiskey sour. 
It's a bit strong. You could definitely get a lot of that uh, lemon in there. And I think I made mine pretty sweet too. So I, I really like it mixed. Yeah, Very we'll good. let you know when we get to the bottom. Yeah, Brenda's agree. face was like emphasizing that everything he was saying. <laughs> She was making so many cringy faces, like, oh my god. She's like, yeah. Ugh. <laughs> it's too sweet. It's so strong. What What's everyone's rating? rating? It tasted like wine, and anything that tastes like wine, I'm going to give a, a <laughs> five out of five. Brenda? 4.5 out of five. Ooh. That type of wine is one of my favorite wines. So I'll agree with you guys on the wine. I mean, I really do enjoy the wine. I go with a four out of five. So, Eric? I like the beginning, and the end's okay. I'll give it an average three and a half. Yeah, you're the toughest critic. I also wonder if it's like a slow sip, you get used to the wine, and then bam, bourbon. Here's everything the strong you love about a sour. You. So we'll, we'll check in with everyone in like 30 minutes if they're still sober. So, because we have guests today, Brenda's going to give us the overview first. The movie... It's about Donna Trenton, who is frustrated suburban housewife whose life is in turmoil after her husband learns about her having an affair. Brett Chamber is a young boy whose only companion is a son Bernard named Cujo, who in turn is bitten by a rabid bat. Whilst big, Donna's husband is away on business and thinking over his marital troubles, Donna and her five-year-old son, Tad, take her Pinto to Brett Chamber's dad's car shop. The car fails and Cujo is very, very sick. Dot, dot, dot. Wow. Thanks, Brenda. Oh, thank you, Brenda. <laughs> so, Francisco, you're up for probably the oh, most man. stressful part of the show. Yeah, you're about to rap battle I this podcast. So stressed. I don't know about that because reading was pretty hard for me. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. To- I... <laughs> no. I can't tell you how many times I read the overviews and then say them over again because I stutter. And I'm just like, damn, I just cannot read out loud. <laughs> I was that kid that would get nervous to Were get you? called on. Oh, my God. It was my worst nightmare oh, to get no. called on yeah. to read. <gasps> I agree. Yes. That's why I read like that. What? <laughs> I know? was the complete opposite. I just couldn't fucking wait till it was my turn. Oh, so my God. Because I knew I was better than everybody else. <gasps> I don't mean this in any like offensive way to people who can't read. Me like, and Brenda. <laughs> well, By the Francisco, way, Brenda's a lawyer. Francisco agreed too. But <laughs> he agreed with his face. He didn't say anything. But no, I'm serious. I would like listen to them and I would even count like, okay, the teacher is stopping at this paragraph. All right, every kid's getting about this many words. All right, I'm probably going to read this piece. I'm I would ready. do that too, but out of anxiety because I had to practice what I was going to read. Oh. Yeah. I feel adorable. like I can read super amazing. But when there's people hearing me read, it's like no hablo inglés at that point. Like, oh. I just No, can't. same. Yeah. I could read like super fast in my head, know everything. And then someone asks me to read out loud. I'm like, oh, what is English? I will say that you guys are probably better at reading comprehension than me, though. I could read a thousand things in half like nobody's business out loud. But I'm not going to remember a single thing or interpret or comprehend yes, anything. Because that I just read. <laughs> while we were watching this movie... You were like, that happened in the book? And I'm like, yes, there was so much explanation about this happening in the book. I listened to the audiobook at 2.6 speed. Like a psychopath. (laughs) No lemons for your tequila shots and 2 point speed at... 2.6. 2.6 speed speed for audiobooks. Yeah, it was going too slow. I think we're just stalling for Francisco because he's about to... He's about to give the overview at 2.6 speed? Yeah, he is. To beat it under a minute? Rap God mode? Okay, who's got a timer? Stress me out. Ready, set, go. Okay, so the movie starts off with Cujo, the giant St. Bernard. He's kind of in like a field and he's chasing a little bunny. The bunny goes into like a little uh, tunnel look-alike thing. It's like, it's like a little uh, tree trunk tunnel. Uh, he goes in there. He goes after the uh, Cujo goes after the bunny. He gets stuck and there's like a kind of a bunch of bats. Uh, it, it almost looked kind of like a bat cave. So there's a bunch of bats he scares them the bats are like bro come on why are you waking me up so they bite him they bite his nose so he goes away like kind of crying and any uh what you distracted me oh uh, hurry so up, anyway, hurry yeah up. so anyway he goes uh da, 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 now i'm like not focused anymore so, you got this bro okay you got this? uh so he go <laughs> he goes back they introduce uh tad in his room with his dad and he's scared tad is scared of the monster inside blah 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 then um uh, Vic and Donna, they are married, and then Vic is like a marketing director of some kind, blah, blah, blah. Time's up. Oh, no. That was terrible. Gotta take a shot, Francisco. Gotta take a shot and reach out. I forget that he's easily distracted. Yeah, she distracted me. I was like, yeah. (laughs) Oh, no. (laughs) Because we were trying to give you clues to like... I'll take it with you. Okay, Eric's gonna take it with you. Because Francisco actually only got to the beginning. I think it's Brenda's turn. For what? 
to do a summary. Francisco literally yeah. spent like 30 yeah. seconds on the beginning of the book. <laughs> on the first scene? On oh the first oh scene. Oh my god. And bunny then the bunny and, jumped oh, over the, the log. <laughs> In my head, I was going 100 miles an hour. <laughs> You're going six He literally two, spent you know? 20 minutes describing the first scene. You said I had an hour. Sorry, 20 <laughs> seconds. <laughs> oh, that's true, Brenda. You did tell him he had an hour. All right, Francisco, you lost. So. They lose terribly. Let's let Brenda summarize for a minute. And then if she Ooh. loses, it, she'll have to join in. Where he left off, which is like the first scene. <laughs> so what Francisco said, but then. All right, three, two, one. So then they go back to the house, and then Tad says that there's a monster in my closet. Both of his parents try to comfort him and tell him everything's okay, that the monsters are not real. Then, long story short, the wife is cheating on her husband with the guy that fixes her table. Apparently, he's fixing other things. But regardless, so they found out that um, he's cheating on his wife. And she goes to take the car to the chamber's house where Cujo lives. And they get stuck in the car. She starts freaking out because... Tad's not doing so well. She gets out of the car, goes into the house, and hits Cujo with a bat. And then she kills Cujo with the bat. And then she saves the kid. End of story. <laughs> Ten seconds. She said she was nervous, but she said it so calmly. <laughs> she was like, done. Mic she drop. Said, she said, I would like to please the court. She said, long story short. May, may it please the court. <laughs> 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 okay, so Brenda doesn't have to take one, but Francisco, you lost pretty bad. <laughs> Damn. All right. Brenda, you did it. Good job. Cheers. Cheers. I'm only taking Cheers. a baby one. So are we both psychopaths, bro? Oh, you did it? No lime? Weirdos. That was Great really job, fun. Guys. Brenda, you fucking nailed it. Francisco, you need to work on your skills. I'm sorry. Do you want to give us some fun facts that I we do. don't know? I have a couple of fun facts. All of us here... First of all, our dog lovers. We're all dog parents. Yeah, Brenda, Francisco have Benny, Doug. Doug is... Uh, Amsef Terrier. Mm -hmm. Benny is... Pomeranian Maltese. So Loki is just a mutt. Loki's <laughs> insane. He's a Chow Chow, Pit, Rottweiler, German Shepherd mix. And he's apparently got a little bit of Akita and Shiba Inu in him. And Loki and Doug come from the same shelter. They do. Actually, it's thanks to Brenda and Francisco that we got Loki. That we got stuck with a demon. Because a thousand and a <laughs> half applications for adoption later, this was the only place that actually listened to us. <laughs> you want to know what's so sad is that at the beginning of the pandemic, people were adopting dogs like crazy. And now that people are returning back to the office, they're returning their dogs. That's so stupid. That is yep. heartbreaking. That's infuriating. It it's, it's infuriating. It's like at the highest rate ever. That's what I mm -hmm. heard at least. That's it's why so we need to ridiculous. sneak more dogs into this condo. We really do. <laughs> just kidding. We need and to if, move out. And if get... the HOA is listening to this, I don't give a shit. I'm just saying. Listen, I will <laughs> sick my so, dogs on you. <laughs> I don't know who you are, but we're bringing more dogs into this building. <laughs> we're bringing more dogs. <laughs> and we're having so them we, diarrhea we all over the lawn. We want a dog here, too. Yeah. And oh, I think yes. Cujo is a pretty good name for a dog, you know? I thought yeah. so, too. I walked out yeah, while we were cute. watching this movie to greet Loki. And I was like, what are you doing, little Cujo? What yeah, are you doing out here? Cujo. Yeah. So, fun facts, because oh, yeah. we haven't even gotten to that. <laughs> fun facts. I have three. Anywhere from 5 to 13 dogs were needed to film the movie and required specialized training where each dog was taught a specific command. So, one was taught to tackle, one was taught to bark, one was taught to growl, etc., etc. Apparently, the dog handler didn't even want the dog to be a St. Bernard because the breed is hard to train, apparently. Oh, really? Yeah, he was, like, very adamant about not having a St. Bernard be in this movie, and the director was like no it needs to be a saint bernard but yeah it's what it is in the book yeah so either way we got a saint bernard so cute but additionally they had a man in a dog suit a mechanical dog and a dog suit for dogs in case they needed to use a different breed so for example a lab could wear a saint bernard dog suit because labs were supposedly oh. easier to train hmm. yeah but so they didn't end up using the dog suit so the dog suit for the dog they didn't end up using that's it. pretty interesting so you're dressing up a dog basically i was wondering actually i'm like okay they make it seem pretty you know almost realistic right and i was just wondering how they trained the actual dog so that makes more that sense. was literally one of my notes too it was like like, how do they train the animals to act? <laughs> <laughs> we can't even train our dog to chill out. No. Let alone. He'd make a great Cujo. Yeah. And, and just one. <laughs> it's just him, not 13. Just him. You don't need <laughs> other dogs. But so second fact, D. Wallace's stunt double was injured during the final shot between Cujo and Donna. If a shot was too dangerous for Wallace, her stunt double was sent in. So apparently they were able to shoot the scene of Cujo's final attack in one go. And we're like, yes, this is great. 
Cubby, which is the name of the St. Bernard that was in the shot acting Aww. as Cujo, was taught to lunge toward them whenever the stunt woman moved forward. So if she moved forward, he would attack, right? And that was like the, the command. So although they got it in the first shot, when they celebrated, the stunt woman was like, yeah, and moved forward towards <gasps> Cujo. The stunt woman named Jean Coulter excitedly celebrated, moved toward Cubby, and he bit the end of her nose off. Oh. Free plastic like, surgery actually. right there. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, apparently she was like rushed to the hospital and they like glued it back on. I was going to say, isn't it like not good to train a dog to do that? Because anytime he sees a blonde woman that looks like her move, he's going to want to attack them. I'm sure they could like untrain some things. But he was trained to like attack, like full on bite then? I think it's just like he was like, this is what I've been trained to do. I don't think it was like a dog aggression. I think it was just like, this is my training. Oh, she's doing the thing that I'm supposed to do. Responded Action. and actually attacked. I want to treat her caught off guard. There you go. She just got her nose bitten off. Yeah. Oh, that's that Ouch. sucks. She was apparently injured again during a Jaws 2 filming thing. So she oh, just I haven't got bad seen luck. Jaws. I didn't see Jaws 2. I didn't know there was a second one. Last fact. This is the funnest of them all. The dogs had to have their tails literally tied down because the St. Bernards were just too happy and friendly. They're famously a very friendly breed. Mm -hmm. They're just having so much fun on set. You pointed out in one scene, you're like, he's attacking her, but his tail is wagging. It's the scene where Joe's friend gets killed. You see the body go limp, Mm -hmm. but the St. Bernard's tail is like wagging. It's like, oh, he's happy. He's just happy he got a snack. Yeah, He's tearing this guy apart. This is so fun. (laughs) It's a good day for me. Yeah, I got to eat raw. That's all you got? Yeah, it's all I got. So I think we are ready to start. This movie deviates quite a bit from the source material. Cool. So how long are we going to spend on the first scene, though? Like 30 minutes or so? <laughs> That's the whole podcast. <laughs> no, an hour, bro. An hour. Really loves that scene. You get an hour. It's an amazing scene. It is. He becomes Batman. It's not bad dog. So as Francisco explained for a whole minute, the scene <laughs> opens up with Cujo chasing a rabbit into a location that like a, a hole underground disney vibes from this whole intro scene though the music the and everything yeah honestly now that you mention it the first time i looked up the trailer that's kind of the vibes i got and funny thing the book actually starts with once upon a time so there you go maybe that's what they were going for it's a cute little story and then all of a sudden, <laughs> yeah blood and rabbit guts. dog I was wondering if these bats were uh, animatronics because the whole scene is emphasized on their faces growling and screeching. And I don't think bats are that aggressive. Maybe they filmed like bats at a zoo. And they're just fucking with them. And we're like, let's get them attacking the camera or something. They kind of seem like little gremlins. Kuja gets bit. And just like bats ruin our whole fucking 2020, they ruin Cujo's lives. Look, I don't know what what y'all think, but this whole movie just makes me feel real bad for Cujo. Oh, I am going to say right off the bat. <laughs> right off the bat. <laughs> he died right off the bat, baby. Yeah. Too soon. Oh, oh, oh. Too, too soon. <laughs> I, okay, after reading the book and watching this movie, more after reading the book, the humans in this book are terrible. And I just felt bad for Cujo the entire book. I don't give a shit about anybody other than Cujo. I don't, I don't even care about the kid. Tad, annoying. Oh, we'll, we'll get to Tad because that's a whole <laughs> thing. He looked yeah. adorable in the movie. Oh, adorably but annoying. in the book... He was so annoying. Sorry, try my at, own Try at 2.6 speed. Brenda, if you read the book, what was your Tad impression inside your head? <laughs> Not that annoying, actually. So maybe, I don't know if it has to do with whoever does the audiobook for Tad. Oh, for sure. The narrator was like, Mommy, Mommy, yeah. Mommy. And I was like, oh my God, yeah. kill this kid already. <laughs> I mean, look, good actor this kid because he did exactly the same thing. Oh, yeah. The kid in the movie, he played Tad like the book. The book. <laughs> but yeah, the narrator, I think, really ruined Tad for me. That's interesting. Yeah, because I, I stopped listening to the audiobook and I had a better Tad. impression of Tad. That's probably what it was. Oh, okay. I, I would agree with the voice. It was so annoying when she did the voice. Brenda started reading the actual book when she heard Tad's voice in the audio. She's like, oh, <laughs> She's no, like, no. I'm, I'm done with this audiobook. I said, I'm out. I'm going <laughs> to yeah. just read it in my head. Thank you. But so we can introduce the annoying as fuck Tad, naturally, afraid that his closet door opened on its own. He goes and closes it and he runs back to his light switch and he's like, Oh, fuck. And he, like, kind of misses the light switch to run back to his bed. And they do a pretty cool effect with the cinematography to make it seem like the bed is super far. He has to run back in time from turning the lights off 
back to where his bed is. Did you guys ever do that? I like how he says, do you guys remember that? I'm like, yeah, yesterday when I turned off my bedroom lights and ran to the bed. Yes. This, is why we, this is why we got lamps right next to our bed. We never had that. That's why I took my phone to the bathroom because it has a lamp in there, you know, mm. light. That's, that's a strategy going to bed. You turn on the light next to your bed. You get up, turn off the lights from the light switch, go back to bed. Then you can turn around and turn off the lamp next to your bed. No, That's the, why you yell at your husband for going to bed at four in the morning. The realest strategy <laughs> is getting the clap on, clap off. Y'all oh, that. yeah. <laughs> Ooh. Or, or I need echo. those in my life. Or echo if he actually ever does her job. You need to be like, <laughs> Alexa. <laughs> <laughs> when we try to play music Alexa. in Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think she understands that. <laughs> no, Brenda, it's because you have to say, Alexa, me da miedo el cucuy. And then she'll turn on the lights. And then she literally knows what you're saying. It's so funny that you have to say it in a broken English. No, not, what would you call the opposite? A broken uh, just, Spanish? Just you got you to get your best American accent going. Yeah, best yeah, yeah. American Spanish American. accent. But Eric was making fun of me because as a kid, my bed was right next to the light switch. So I never had to do that. Her parents said, fuck a kid coming to us in the middle of the night. We're just going to put the light switches right by them. <laughs> she could solve her all problems. I was clearly the oldest child. Genius. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? We're doing that with our kids. I don't know what you're talking about. No, they're going to have Alexa. Well, as long as they don't have the accent, right? Then it'll be fine. <laughs> they probably won't. They're not. I must speak Spanish only to our kids. And then Loki's going to walk around like, mm, pinches no, gringos. No Nintendo. But yes, Tad is doing this. Something that bothered me in the book and kind of is not elaborated in the movies at all is that Stephen King is portraying this murderer, right? This murderer lived in this house. He committed horrible crimes in the town and he died in the house. So Tad is seeing this guy's spirit in the closet. The book never really goes back to it in the movie. It's never even addressed. It's just like a typical little kid afraid of his closet thing. I thought that it was mentioned later in the book, but like not really like clearly I don't know. Like, I felt like the whole supernatural, the fact that, like, Cujo was taken over by this murderer was, like, tried to put throughout the book. But I, I did also see the whole, that the movie didn't want to portray it as that and at all. Like, the supernatural aspect of it. Yeah, they just threw a rabbit dog and that was it. But, yeah, I saw the little hints here and there, especially, like... Like the eyes, the focus on the eyes yeah. throughout the book. At the end, you're kind of left, I guess, left to decide if it was, like, the murderer made all this stuff happen or Cujo was honestly just, like, a dog who caught rabies. But, like, they built it up so much in the book and they didn't even address it in the movie. And I was kind of like, what is the point? I think it's also mentioned in the book that... I think Donna says it. I don't remember what character says it. But it's like so many chains of events and random factors had to come into play for these characters to be stuck where they were in the car and tortured by Cujo. Like it, it was like they didn't give Cujo shots. But also like her car had to be messing up. So I think the like theme of the novel at least is that fate is the scariest thing ever. Because a random chain of events can decide the course of your life. I don't know if you guys yeah. caught that in the book as well. Yeah, okay. I personally thought that it was, it did talk a lot about, like, I agree with the chain of events and the bad decisions of someone leading up to, like, that outcome. But I also saw maybe, like, a theme throughout the book being, like, being trapped. Because Donna felt trapped in her marriage, so she cheated. Chambers' wife felt trapped in her marriage, so she left, you know? And, like, that whole, like... Those different things like work together to cause the like leading end event in the book, at least like the whole feeling trapped. Like even Cujo, it starts right off the bat. He was trapped in that hole and he got bit and then he got rabies. I, I just saw the whole concept of being trapped and the fear of feeling trapped is like, you know, to have so many consequences throughout the book, I guess. That's interesting because if we were to compare the book to the movie in the book, everyone loses that trap. But in the movie, we get a couple of winners. Spoiler alert for anyone who hasn't read the book. Tad doesn't survive. He does in the movie. So in the book, I'd say it's a lot eerier in that mm -hmm. the traps are deadly. In the movie, it's a little more yes. lighthearted. You called it from the front, baby, and said Tad's probably going to survive. Because Hollywood kind of does this thing of like, audiences can't accept an unhappy ending. So I was like, I don't think Tad's going to die in the movie, but he doesn't make it in the book. 
No, and so I think that's why I think the book's better than the movie. I do too, because, and then I guess after this we'll be done with the book and just talk about the movie, mm. but there is something more tragic about Tad not making it. It's more like, it's a punishment to Donna for her affair. I think the real horror in a lot of Stephen King novels is the loss of the nuclear family, because it's like, okay, we read The Shining too, and it's like, Jack loses it, his kid and his wife end up surviving. Grief is kind of like a common theme in his novels, and that's not presented in this movie. I don't know. Yeah, if you guys I think it's would like agree. the loss of the nuclear family through like the bad choices. Like that's the horror that you caused this on yourself. You know, and like the in the book, the powerful quote, I like at the end, it's like, How long? How long has he been dead, Donna? Like that question that- at the end, like Damn. That's what really hits yeah, you. Yeah, that moment in the book, Donna just didn't even realize what all was going on and was just so incapacitated with the situation that she couldn't even pay attention. Could you guys explain, and this is more for idiots like me, but what the nuclear family is? <laughs> it is mother, father, and children. And children. So your, your aunt. Why is that the nuclear family? That is the center. That uh, is the most important. And then aunts, uncles, cousins is like spreading out. Nuclear family yeah. is like... And even Idiot. the book, the father falls asleep. Like, he gets there late oh, because yeah. he mm-hmm. he falls asleep. And he gets there and he's like, oh, you know, maybe if I had acted earlier. I mean, really linking everything you guys just said. So, Vivi, you started with saying that, you know, all these little events kind of lead towards the, the ending, right? And it's, it's crazy because, I mean, that's honestly what I really, really enjoyed about the book. That they took, I feel like he took his time kind of arranging everything so it, it, it would happen like it did, right? And kind of back to the quote that Brenda said at the end where, you know, hey, Donna, how long has he been dead, right? All of that kind of just kind of comes together, right? Everything kind of led to that, all these little things. And I feel like the book really built all that up. And that's kind of what I, I didn't really like about the movie. It didn't bring, it didn't really do anything to, to show how all these little things were built up to lead to, to the ending. Right. It was just kind of like, okay, here's a story. This is kind of the basics of it. It doesn't really even bring about what I really enjoyed about the, the book. I think that's going to be something that happens when someone reads the books versus movies, just in any general case, because you could do a lot more with the book mm-hmm. and add so much more meat to the story versus, all right, I have an hour and a half or I have this budget that I can only do so much with. And so I need to be able to kind of quickly summarize this. Francisco. <laughs> and, <laughs> or not. I didn't, you know, or not. I go over budget right away. But, <laughs> yeah. But you're stuck trying to figure out, okay, how can I emphasize the most important parts and themes of this movie quickly and under budget? We get a lot more about Cujo in the book. In the movie, you're kind of just like, he's just a dog. He's feeling sick. He's gradually getting worse. And then he's just this bad dog. In the book, you get these notes about Cujo realizes he's being bad. Cujo has like always been good. He himself is questioning his own actions. Like I don't Which usually growl. Which makes it growl. so much sadder. It really does. I I like felt so bad. I was like, fuck everybody, man. I will end this movie. Like, look, who, who the fuck? What? It's a happy ending in this movie. And I was like, Ugh. for who? For who? For fucking who? Yeah. This like, terrible Cujo family. Just died because he got sick. That's like saying that somebody got cancer and got shot down because they went rabid. Like, no. Somebody help this fucking dog. He's dirty. He's so, sick. Let's get into it. Okay, so I think we pretty much... I'm mad. Yes. I think we pretty much expressed how much this movie is not like the book. And, no. and the book does more justice to the characters. Like when he's like, oh, he's my kid. Like I would never attack him. And he runs away. You know, he has that struggle of like, I want to attack this person. But wait, no, he's... The kid, he's like, my kid, I can't do this to him. But we don't you get feel that. Yeah. So sad. I mean, you kind of do uh, with Brett. You do kind of get it. I, at least. Kind of. Because we read the book, we get that. I don't know if. if no, if you didn't read the wouldn't. book, you'd be like, okay. Yeah. Okay, he just went away and that's it. But yeah, right. you're right. If you read the book, you kind of get like that scene. Like what's happening in Kujo's mind at that point. We get the scene after Tad has had kind of like a horrible night with this quote unquote murderer not murderer in his room they're all having breakfast the next morning and steve who we later find out is actually having an affair with donna walks in and he gives tad a toy and then later says that he's gonna bring back this table his job is clearly furniture you get the happy family 
But then you also notice that Donna is acting kind of weird when Steve walks in. Clearly, Steve is Vic's friend because they play tennis together too. But Steve acts like he's like the family friend. He walks in, sits down at the yeah. kitchen table and acts like he owns the place because even if they were the best of friends i think if someone showed up to my house they're not just gonna walk in they're gonna say hey i'm outside Let they're me at in. least gonna knock this dude never knocks watch me <laughs> <laughs> hold my beer hold my beer <laughs> brenda's <laughs> about to point. walk into our house every day <laughs> hey actually put pause on the podcast we're here <laughs> <laughs> open up but this scene is weird because, again, in the book, it's not really depicted that Steve and Vic have a relationship. But in the movie, they're like tennis buddies. And we awkwardly get introduced to the Donna and Steve situation with a quick little mention at the tennis match. Did you guys catch this? They finished playing tennis. Steve is talking about XYZ thing. And I think Vic's like, whatever turns you on. And he's like, yeah, next scene is the affair. <laughs> Yeah. You know what turns me on? Your wife. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I also wrote down that she's wearing the sexiest pioneer dress you've ever seen in this. Yeah, why is, is she wearing this? Red dress? Yeah, the red dress that's like. Mm. With the fluttery sleeves? Yes. And the sexiest hot. panties ever. Ever. You know, the polka dot, weird. Long sleeve shirt, leggings. You know. I mean, how could he resist, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Do you see those ankles? Jesus. Damn. <laughs> Whatever turns you on. Exactly. Pioneer dresses. So the next scene, I think, is to imply that the family is happy. And I think it's funny. Donna in the book is more worried about why she did the affair. And she is conflicted herself as to, like, what put me through this? In the movie, she later goes to tell Steve, like, we can't do this anymore. She's like, I have a terrific husband. I have a terrific son. Why am I doing this? There's no real reason. And in the book, the reason that she originally thought to do this was because she was, like, getting old and left behind by the young girls. And guys, wasn't she, like, 24 in the book? Yeah, I thought yeah. it was something like that. I and in that. the book, it was annoying because she was like, I feel... Like, I have nothing to live for when Tad's away in school. And it's like, then we talk about it. You don't go out having an affair. I don't know. Yeah, That's I think it's just... personal opinion. Exactly. They show up at Joe's place because Vic has noticed that the car's fucked up. The mailman's the one who's like, you can go to Joe Tamber's place. Sorry, Joe Camber. Joe Camber is the guy who fixes the car. That's why later on Donna ends up there too. But Donna yes. immediately is afraid. She sees yes. Cujo and is immediately, without any reason, worried for Tad. We get the scene, too, because Cujo's, like, coming up with this dramatic music, like, scary music. But he's just... Not... And he's literally just walking up to them. It almost makes you think, like, is Donna just afraid of dogs? I think the movie portrays that, like, the size difference between Tad and Cujo. And in the book, I think it is trying to talk about how the book is, like, Donna thought, hey, he could eat him into bites. And it's like, interestingly enough, maybe at the end of the book, he does want to eat him in two bites. But I agree with Eric, like at the point where they meet, like, why, why are you afraid? You know, at that specific moment when he's still okay. I told Eric, like, this, this book would be real different if Cujo was a chihuahua. <laughs> <laughs> He's still in the back of your yeah. mind. I think it's still an animal. It's still possible that it could be like, mm -hmm. fuck you, I'm going to bite your hand off. Maybe it's like a human instinct thing. Mm -hmm. It could be. We find out that Vic owns his company with Roger, his partner. They manage this sharp cereal account. And something bad has happened. The dye in the cereal has caused kids to like throw up red. Poop red. Pee poop red. red. And people think they're having hemorrhages. They're like reporting this on the news. Donna is kind of like not taking this seriously. She's like, it's not a big deal because she's having her whole turmoil with her affair with Steve. While Vic is kind of having like this stress at work, he's leaving work a little earlier and, and things like that. Donna finally tries to break things off with Steve, which is like very calm in the movie. Not at all calm in the book. The guy attacks her and it becomes very violent. In the movie, he's like, yeah, sure, whatever you want. That's not what happens. But he still, once Donna leaves, gets aggressive and immediately... And goes after, after her. her. Yeah, and like tries to talk to her at her car. And Vic just so happens to be passing by at this time and sees them, takes the longest U-turn ever, tries to go back and see what's happening, but they're gone at this point. So at this point, we know that Vic's suspicious of what's going on. What'd you do today? You know, just fuck some bitches. Yeah, Vic gets home, suspicious. While this scene is going on, we get simultaneously the scene of the campers, Campbells, whatever their name is. Camber. 
campers. I don't know if you guys want to talk about how their relationship is portrayed in this movie versus how it is in the book. She's trying to kind of get away from him, kind of leave him in a sense, but she doesn't think she has the courage really to to leave him. Yeah, she doesn't think he's a good example for her son. Right. She's kind of just trying to stray him away. In the book, at least, she's trying to kind of introduce him to like, in a sense, a whole new world with her sister and her husband to see what the possibilities are, what he can achieve, this and that, because he's a smart kid. And they don't really show that kind of relationship between them they kind of show a little bit right when she's like well i got you this gift can you give me mine i'm trying to go to connecticut with my with my sister and grateful as fuck he like finds the tool and he runs inside and grabs her aggressive as fuck by the arm and he's like what the fuck did you do and she's like i won the lottery and i got you a gift charity decides to go to connecticut to visit her sister and then joe is like i'm gonna go to boston to live my best life with his neighbor boston out of nowhere instead of vegas or something they live in boston's Maine. pretty cool guys i'm just saying when they're like we're gonna go live up uh <laughs> we're gonna go live the dream at some strip clubs i was like i mean i don't think boston is the place but imagine living in this like super small town where any nothing big happens. cities the spot and yeah. they're trying to drive to it too they're in maine and it's like a five hour drive or so damn it's just damn. like we're not trying to fly yeah i think in the book they talk about like prostitutes or something but i'm like if there's like you know baseball like fenway park there's, there's your breweries. wife there's also <laughs> your wife and kid not yeah, to yeah, mention yeah. that <laughs> so, like, there's Fred Fred like, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but like baseball and breweries, breweries. <laughs> you know fuck a wife and a breweries kid are right? like, <laughs> <laughs> Damn. So if I'm not coming home this weekend, um just gonna go bar hopping. <laughs> yeah. Joe immediately after he's been talking to charity, Joe and Gary are complaining about her going on a trip. And I wanna point out that Cujo is having the worst hangover of his dog life. In this scene, everything is emphasized. Gary goes to the freezer, the door opens and it's loud, getting the ice out, cracking the ice, the keys on Gary's hip. It's implied that Cujo is bothered by everything. Joe says something about, like, oh, if they do this, I'll, I'll sit Cujo on him. And Gary's like, oh, that dog won't do anything. And he slaps Cujo and Cujo's like, kind of like, bro, leave me alone. Steve kind of finally having the violent outburst that's described in the novel, but still kind of tame. The novel is fucked up. Oh, he yeah, is yeah, yeah, yeah. It, It's kind of like PG compared to yeah. the other novel. Yeah, because he leaves a mess in the bed in the novel. Everything, like every, like a couple a- aspects of Steve, including this one where, you know, he confronts her and tells her he's not going to take no for an answer and takes they, it a little too far. Yes, because they paint him as friendly. So in the novel, Vic does not find out about the affair until Steve, angry that he's been broken up with, sends him a anonymous Note. letter. Yeah. Basically saying, your wife has been having an affair with me. Oh my yeah. God. In this scene in the movie, me and Eric were cracking up. Because Vic walks in on Steve and Donna, like, arguing about milk. And, and Vic literally just turns to Donna and is like, yes or no. That's that's it, bro. Like, that's- Steve walks out. <laughs> like, the note completely condensed into, like, yes or no. Like, the messed up <laughs> note that Vic kept replaying in his head for, like, a whole chapter. Yes or no. And the note yes. is pretty cool. Like, he's like, hello, Vic. Nice wife you got there. I enjoyed fucking the shit out of her what's that mole just above her pubic hair look like to you to me it looks like a question mark do you have any questions and in the movie it's just like yes or no <laughs> like <laughs> i was the just ne- he's like, the Ned flanders of the movie he's just a friendly you neighbor <laughs> fixing your furniture and shit you and your wife <laughs> <laughs> nail your wife <laughs> hey neighbor <laughs> We don't see him ever again after that scene. Just when he trashes the house. But let's go back to this ridiculous scene between Vic and Donna where he's like, yes or no? And she's just like, yeah. I turned to Vivi and I said, yo, so you fucking or what? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) You know, like eyebrows raised, thumbs up. And Donna's like slapping that ass. (laughs) Like, yeah, boy. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my God. This is so messed up in the movie. Donna's just like, "Yes." yes. Continues to clean milk. And what? And what? <laughs> what you what gonna, you do, gonna do about it? Yes! <laughs> clean his milk up real quick. <laughs> this milk is semen. Oh. Maybe 
Maybe that's what it was uh, an allusion to. I don't know if, if semen is like super rated R for a podcast, but it's heavily used in the book. When Steve does what he does, he's because like... Because he's a much more violent character in the book. He's like, let me jerk off here. Let me jerk off there. First of all, worst criminal ever. You're leaving your DNA freaking everywhere. He's and like, it, they don't know who he was, and now they know. <laughs> now they know. <laughs> this calling card. Ugh. This dude's like a psychopath for sure. <laughs> After we get this like really weird scene, we get the like monster words where we realize that Vic is like a really good dad. He's like taking care of Tad. We took the time to point out this house is amazing. I was thinking something similar. Like when I was reading the book, I pictured this kind of almost like a hut. Not not to that extent, like tiny, but I pictured a, a small home. And then you look at this and it's just like enormous. Tad's massive. room was like massive just just by himself. If you were Donna, how would you fill up your time while your kids at school? I would read books and listen to podcasts such as this one and oh. watch movies and maybe go and ride my bike, especially here around Cambridge, it's pretty nice to ride a bike. So what i'd do yeah i'd agree like you'd kind of find something that you like like reading books i do like reading books watching movies going on bikes going on runs they have a beautiful view they have i assume you would enjoy the hell out of running around yes don't forget 14 ghosts are in this house so you also ask them to help with some of the you gotta commune with the demons in this house like lord of the rings you call on that army to do everything for you when you know they're they're finished and then you get to do whatever you want and then you tell them to also chill on the beach with you. Yes, you tell the ghosts, <laughs> yeah. you gotta clean my house. I'm gonna go walk the dogs on the fucking beautiful beach that we live on. <laughs> <laughs> but instead, yeah. she spends her time thinking like, oh, I'm so miserable, I'm 24, and I'm oh like really old. Oh my god, and, you know, this yes, <laughs> I'm dying at 24. <laughs> yeah, I need the furniture man's penis. Because my, yeah. my husband is just working his hardest life ever affording this place that I live in. And in but the movie, she even dad. tells him, like, you're such a good dad. After the monster works and it's like and yet you still cheated on him in oh book. what a good dad it just makes me want to cheat on you real quick oh, yeah. <laughs> in the book. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna use this image of you today when i'm banging steve oh my God. <laughs> in the book does she feel the same way that she does in the movie she feels like she's panicking and time is passing her by she has no real reason to hate Vic, right? No. Okay. Because I was like, there's no... I mean, he's literally doing his job. He's not being a bad dad. He's, like, great to I think, essentially, he paints her as, like, a bored housewife. So they're gonna have an affair. This is the 80s. The, the only, like, thing that I saw that was a problem uh, was, like, when they were at the dinner table, and then Vic is just like, we, we no longer have conversation or something like that. Just talking about their communication, really. But that was it. Well, this book was a little bit more in detail about Donna's midlife crisis. <laughs> midlife. Quarter, quarter, quarter life crisis. Quarter life crisis. So. That was like the, the main thing. And I'm just like, even then, it's just like, all right, cool. Now you're going to go screw this dude. Come on. So Brett here is barking. This part makes me sad because it's the scene that we said. Cujo just kind of walks away. But knowing what it, what Cujo is thinking in the book, you know that Cujo is second guessing. Like, that's my human. Like, why am I acting like this? This is weird. I'm growling. But like, that's just, that's Brett, right? Brett tries to bring up the fact that Cujo is acting fucking weird before him and Charity leave. Charity is kind of just like, oh, whatever. He'll just come by and Joe will give him whatever the fuck he wants and... Don't worry about it. You know, Joe loves that dog more than anything. So, like, he'll just come by and beg Joe for something. And he'll take care of him. And if you want, you know what? You'll We'll go to Boston. I'm sorry. We'll go to wherever the fuck we're going. Where were they going? We'll go on our trip. And then... We- <laughs> <laughs> I like how Connecticut just does not exist in your brain. It's only Boston. Because why the fuck would you go to Connecticut? It's so unnecessary. But <laughs> <laughs> we'll be on our trip. And you'll just call back. And you'll ask joe how's kujo doing and he'll tell yeah. you so he's like okay fine and that's the end of charity and brett as characters yeah you don't see him for the rest of the film at all wouldn't that be fucked up you go on your trip and you come back home and it's like everyone your dog has killed like 20 people and, also and you your don't dead. even care yes most <laughs> importantly your dog is dead yeah fuck everybody else the dog <laughs> is dead the next scene is pretty much kujo attacking gary larry jerry, jerry whatever his name is terry Harry. And right after that, his owner finds the crime scene and also gets attacked. 
it's a very like in the film not very gory scene but in the novel it's literally describing how Cujo like rips out their guts and their throats while his tail's wagging while his tail's wagging (laughs) he's thrilled to do this so Donna shows up don't forget that Donna was sent to Joe's because Vic leaves for this trip to save the account Donna goes to Joe's She's going to Joe's to fix her car. Yes, because it's kind of stalling a little bit. We thought this was weird because I don't know if you guys have ever had car trouble, but don't you like always call for help? You call your dad, you call somebody, they show up. I thought it was interesting that if the book was based in like the 2000s, it would end real quick. I'm stuck in the car. It doesn't work. The person that's supposed to fix it is not here. There's a rabid dog. Pick up my phone, call 911, and the story ends. <laughs> oh my god. Like, this <laughs> film and novel only works in the 80s. Okay, maybe you forgot your phone, but your kid who's eight years old probably also has a phone. You know, I'd be yeah. interested. Oh, if they don't have a phone? <laughs> they have an iPad. They have, like, you know. They're probably live streaming the, the, the vicious <laughs> rabbit attack <laughs> at that point. They're on Instagram oh, Live. So they're TikToking it. This. <laughs> they see Cujo coming. Oh, no. Oh, no, oh, no, 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 no. no. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah. then call 911 immediately. I would love to see this movie remade for today. It wouldn't work. It'd have to be like so many things. I wish dig deep into it. Or maybe even based on the How did they the lose past. their phone? First of How all. did they have no service? He straight up just eats it from well, the, in the In the country. Mm-hmm. I mean, you go to like, you drive up to New no Hampshire. Oh, like no service? Yeah. No yeah. Service? You drive up to New Hampshire, you don't I take have that service route. in a lot of places. When we drove up to that really creepy ice cream place that was closed and we were oh. about to get murdered. About to risk it all for some ice cream. <laughs> That's some creepy content. For we the were game. risking <laughs> it all. All right, maybe maybe this one I'm actually going to redeem myself. Really quick summary. So me and Brenda are like in the White Mountains in New Hampshire and we're kind of like driving and then we see, okay, there's an ice cream place here. So we took a ride to go up to the ice cream place. You're basically going up a hill and it's the, the more up you go, the darker it gets. There's really no lighting over there. So we get to the the ice cream place it's shut down this is like during covid season kind of like last summer basically summer 2020 so probably got closed down but it still looks kind of sketchy so i flash my lights and you see inside and it looks like just this abandoned place almost like a so butcher eerie. shop yeah, yeah it almost kind of gives you that vibe of a butcher shop and i'm just like uh gonna do a u-turn real quick and then runs like Brenda's like, hurry, hurry, like, turn. I'm just like, oh, skedaddle, yeah. just need to get out of I'm here. I'm like, we're about to get murdered, no big deal. It seriously felt like that. Like, it was just this abandoned area, this little ice cream butcher looking place there it felt like a trap because it, it said did. that it was an ice cream shop and when you get there it's like it seemed like that place hadn't been an ice cream shop for centuries so yeah. that's why it was scary <laughs> so it's yeah got, it was, it was it's pretty got 2000 <laughs> positive google reviews but you're in Texas Chainsaw <laughs> Massacre? Well, That's, they didn't get murdered at the ice cream shop. They didn't, but I think... Spoiler alert. Yeah. We can always go back. We might be ghosts right <laughs> no. now. I don't know. Paying rent? Guys, that's the worst ghost to be. No, those oh, ghosts man, are not supposed terrible. to pay rent. <laughs> <laughs> they're supposed Sorry, to everybody. just do your chores, not pay rent. No, no, no. But they're still living there and paying rent. But I think we... <laughs> it's I the whole Sixth a... Sense thing, like... Yes! Oh, we're actually dead. So... Donna, Donna shows, shows up, up at Joe's and Tad is stuck with his seatbelt. Mm-hmm. She has the door already open because she was about to get out. Cujo suddenly attacks when Tad had seen the monster in the closet. Vic is like, there's no such thing as monsters. Monsters aren't real. And so Tad starts to repeat this as Cujo attacks aggressively. And he's like, not a monster. He's just a doggy. Donna says. And Cujo's like, bitch, bet. <laughs> <laughs> and attacks the car like crazy. So Pretty much the next sequences are Donna and Ted are stuck in the car. Cujo's waiting them out. There's so many phone calls that happen for some reason. Setting Cujo off because he's like, fuck your phone calls. The noises really make him uncomfortable. There is a point where Donna gets out of the car and Cujo attacks her, but she's able to fight him off. She gets bit and this is a little bit more emphasized in the novel that she's really worried about rabies. In the movie, she's just like, I just got bit and whatever. Because she's, that- she's asking, like, how long does it take to set it into a human? How long is it before I can go get a vaccine? Right? Like, is it days, weeks, months? Which mm-hmm. is the questions that I would have in this situation. Donna has this whole situation with Tad. Tad is having kind of, like, 
panic attacks. Heat flashes. Heat flashes. In the novel, it's described as him swallowing his own tongue. Don is able to, like, revive him a couple times. And I think the things that are probably the most different in the film, Vic immediately knows something is wrong and goes home. Roger convinces him that he has to call for a wellness check. And that's when he finds out that Steve has, like, vandalized the home or whatever. Which in the book is... A lot more emphasized. Even the cops themselves are worried about going up to the room, right? The cop is like, this guy is like a psychopath. And he's like worried about going upstairs because he thinks he might find Donna and Tad dead. Yeah. Because upstairs, finds the the room destroyed and says, hey, you know, the house is kind of fucked up. But I also find semen. No, in the movie, it's just like we find a picture ripped up. There's an additional fear factor in the novel with this situation because Vic thinks that Steve has killed Donna and Ted, which I think is more aggressive in terms of fear than the movie does because the movie is just kind of like, oh, yeah, Steve did it. And that's it. And we never see Steve again. No. It's like we found Steve. He admitted to having fucked up at the house, but he's like, I didn't. I didn't actually take your wife and child. In the film, Vic immediately knows that they're at the Campbell's house. Not like in the novel where he takes a nap and he wakes up too late and everyone's dead. Why did he take a nap in the book? You know? Yeah, I don't know. He seemed to just have been tired. And it's Mm -hmm. interesting because in the book, they sent a cop to the Joe Camber's house to like check it out. And then... At the same moment that they sent the cop, they had sent someone to talk to Steve Kemp. And they're like, oh, it's Steve Kemp, Steve Kemp. That's the priority. When the cop doesn't show up after hours, they're like, whatever. And I remember like in the novel, there's an actual line that says, Christ, he's probably having coffee down at the cozy corner. Well, fuck him. He's out of it. And then I made a note. I'm like, yes, he's indeed out of it because he's like dead. <laughs> you know, like you should have followed up <laughs> like, with yeah. him. He, he's so you know, out of it. He's dead. <laughs> yeah, That's a good point. They kind of like just completely ignore that because that was like the lowest priority. I would have loved to see that cop on Dog Showdown, you know? Dog but, Showdown? Yeah, the, the showdown was pretty cool. So actually kind of back to something that we, we were talking about earlier about the, the Frank guy, the, the serial killer cop kind of guy that yeah. uh, was mentioned in the book that was not mentioned in the movie he looks at Cujo and he's just like huh it's Frank huh it's it's you Frank or something like that he he, ma- he makes a connection to that yeah it says for the cop on the book it says for a moment staring into those dark crazed eyes a su- suony kind of horror came over him and he thought hello Frank is it you it's you isn't it what hell is too hot for you so oh. like, he, he yes. does like have that like hey this dog looking at his eyes it's frank which kind of brings it back to 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 it being the the serial killer Mm. but yeah they they didn't really dive into like the cop scenarios as much as they did in the in the book like in the in the book they get into the names and who is this and one of the guys really trying to kind of essentially lead the investigation in a sense but in this case they're just like okay we send somebody up there cool and then all of a sudden like you said eric oh yeah I know that they're at Canvas Place. I'm going to rush over there and going to go get them. Somehow I find out. Yeah. It's not really explained how he finds out. but That's kind of why I was telling you. I said, I think that the impression is that the, that the dog, Cujo, has, although maybe not actually absorbed the spirit of the serial killer, it's insinuated that the characters who are involved think that because this dog has rabies, the serial killer spirit haunts them and so they project that that is the spirit and the acts of the guy in the dog. It's kind of like saying that evil is evil, whether it be in the serial killer or in this dog who is like murderous. Right. The reader is kind of left to interpret as the dog possessed by this previous serial killer. I agree. I think the the reader has room to interpret or to interpret like is this a supernatural thing or like Eric said, is this a common thing for humans to be like we know this murderer that's evil and that could only explain this other evil thing that's going on right now in this town. This cop who was Frank's partner ends up getting brutally murdered by Cujo. It's the typical the dog chase you up the tree scene. And I think the death scene is weird because Cujo just grabs a piece of his chest and the cop's like "Ah," and just dies. Kind of because Donna seeing the scene is trying to like 
get the bat that's on the ground. We get that it's Brett's bat that's been left on the ground. She's trying to run out and catch this and Kujo sees her while he's attacking this cop. And she kind of freezes. And then Kujo kind of like goes back to attacking the cop while she's able to get this bat. That ultimately is what helps her kill Kujo and save her son in the film. I think it's funny in the novel how she's like so set on this bat. She's just like, I need to get this bat. This is the end all be all. But even the novel makes kind of fun of her. Like if she had time to look a little further, she would have noticed the cop's pistol that was lying right on the grass like it was like yes. right there just a little farther from the baseball bat there was the gun Vic's like what did the cop say who went to Kemp's place or Kemp's camper Camper's camper place. and they're like I don't know Vic's like the fuck you talking about and he leaves Donna notices that Tad might be dead Donna is like we need to get the fuck out of here goes out she gets the bat she fights Cujo basically. she has her final standoff Cujo this is kind of like the the end of the film, you know? Cujo's like, where the fuck are you going? She hits him with the bat and she goes off. Oh, I feel yes. more bad about Cujo in the book than in the movie. So it's I think like, the movie was actually trying to get away with not portraying animal cruelty. Yeah, because in the book, she bashes Cujo's head in. It's so sad. But in the film, you kind of get like this POV where Donna's like swinging the bat, but you don't actually ever see her hit Cujo. The bat eventually breaks in the movie. And she's got she this kind of like She vampire stakes him through the, ho- the <laughs> As heart. As he attacks her, yeah. he kind of dies. And that was so sad. I put down in my notes. I literally put down a sad face because I was like, his sad, droopy face. She's like holding it. And he kind of is just dead. He just looks sad. Yeah, he's just dead. We are the wrong people to judge this movie because we all have dogs and nobody <laughs> has kids. <laughs> Grabs the gun and she's like, Kuja's body's just there laying on the ground. So she doesn't shoot him. And she remembers that Ted is like passed out in the back of the car. Runs out. Grabs the gun, bashes the window of the car and grabs Ted. Takes him into the oh house. Oh my god. Doesn't do the correct amount of CPR because she just straight up goes into throwing breaths in his mouth but never but does the, the compressions. compressions. And then like a miracle in any damn movie, <clears throat> Ted is alive. And Vic shows up like way too late to do anything. Before Vic shows up, Cujo is like, bitch, I'm back. You thought I was dead. Crashes through the window. Back 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 again. again. (laughs) Cujo's back. Who let the dogs out? (laughs) (laughs) He's like, I need my treat before I die. He said, surprise, (laughs) motherfucker. Some Terminator moment in there, you know? (laughs) And this is where she shoots him, which does not happen in the book. Cujo's face before he jumps at her and tries to kill her is so, like, puppy. Yeah, it's so sad. I love Cujo. Fuck the rest of this movie. (laughs) Okay, so closing scene is she does revive Tad. First of all, who names a kid Tad? What a weird name. Tatter. Ugh, that's worse. (laughs) Tatter tail. Got him. The last scene is her, like, holding Tad running out of the house because she's heard Vic pull up in the driveway and screaming after them. And that's the end. That's like cut scene. That's it. Eric's notes are all just sad faces. <laughs> Not Cujo. For Cujo. I said happy ending. Dot, 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 For dot, who? dot, dot. For who? Cujo? No. Oh my God. Francisco has a sad face too. I have a poor oh Cujo sad God. face as well. You guys are soulmates. Look, <laughs> due to negligent dog owners... Kujo ended up the fucking way he did. Look, we have Loki rabies vaccinated for the next three years. You know why? I don't want this shit to happen because I give a shit about my (laughs) damn dog. What the fuck is their problem? I definitely (laughs) don't think it was uh, Stephen King's intention that like 20, 30 years from now, millennials would be like, fuck them kids. But like our dogs, though, (laughs) because we just all care about Kujo. I mean, I'm not a Kujo. 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 What the fuck? I mean, okay, look, we can have a kid, but we can care about our kid and also our dog. Yeah. Like I said, the film ends on a happy note. Tad and Donna live and Vic shows up way late. The saddest story of them all. Vic shows up way too late to do anything. <laughs> okay, is Kujo alive? <laughs> no. Did they go and vaccinate Kujo? I guess this is where we can talk about how it's very different from the novel. Because in the novel, Vic shows up while Donna is beating up Kujo. I think you're supposed to gather that she's kind of gone a little crazy because she was bitten by a dog with rabies. And mm-hmm. she's become violent. It's sad because she decides that this is the moment 
to stand up against Cujo, but it's already too late. Ted has already died in the novel. The rest of the book is about how Vic and Donna want to repair their relationship after the affair after their son has died in the most like tragic way that i can imagine did you guys think about so it made me think about hamilton so like obviously in the story spoiler alert for the hamilton play he cheats and then obviously the the son ends up dying and then it's it's kind of after that it's a little bit about a reconciliation between hamilton and eliza and it's just kind of them struggling through that both you know, the, the loss of their marriage in a sense, and most importantly, the loss of their child. It's and that's so kind of what it made me think about reading the, the book. I didn't even think about Hamilton, but yeah, that's uh, pretty similar themes. If you haven't seen Hamilton, go sing the songs for the next <laughs> History three weeks. Has its Eliza! <laughs> and Peggy. <Angelica. laughs> and Peggy, yeah. Dude, I can't tell you how much, how many feels I get from the History Has Its Eyes on You song. Oh, I listened to that soundtrack during work. <laughs> Inspiration. Yeah, yeah work, I'm not throwing running. away my shot. You ain't gonna be president <laughs> now. You ain't never gonna be president now. <laughs> <laughs> I just so wanted to say to what Vivi was saying about the end of the book, how they tried to move on after the tragic thing that happened like they do try to move on like they start to try to mend the relationship and i think that brett gets another dog and then like his yes. family moves on without their father because the father died he and was it's trash crazy anyway because, like yeah like the dog Cujo, he doesn't get a second chance he's like dead and his remains like his ashes go out with the trash like they're disposed with the trash and he talks about how they decapitate Kujo to go investigate and study the head his rabies yeah and then it it talks about how he always tried to be a good dog that he tried to do all the things his man and his woman and his boy wanted to do and expected (laughs) of him how he would have died for them if he had been required like he had never wanted to kill anybody that's like he had been struck by something breaking destiny or fate I'm literally like, tearing up. Is everybody crying? Because yeah. we're crying. I'm Honestly, crying that, right that, that, that quote right there It literally was... says, free will was not a factor. Oh, like, man. he did not have any control to what happened to him. No, and it's a Died. theme in this movie about how all these random chains of events dictated the character's fate. Everyone moves on. And, like, I think the last paragraph, it's like, no one ever discovered, like, the, the cave where the bats were. And it's like, eventually, the the creatures, even like the bats moved on. Like the yeah. bats abandoned that cave. Like everyone moved on except Cujo. And that bothered Who me died. so much about Brett and Charity's last conversation. They're like, we're going to get him his shots this time, right? Like Cujo hadn't killed like so many people. And they're going to fix it all by just getting their new puppies like a rabies shot. No. Yeah. <laughs> Part of it is Poor like, Cujo. you are responsible for what happened to an extent. Yes. Yeah. And mm-hmm. then you to just a large can't extent. to a very large extent. And then you just can't replace your dog like that. He's literally your kid. But these people are shitty. Every character in this movie, in this book, is supposed to be shitty, and you're not supposed to be like sympathetic towards them. You get the sense that Donna's being punished for her affair while her kid lives in the movie. In the book, he dies, and I'm like, whoa, that's an extreme punishment for an affair. It was a very brief part in the book. Where Donna is about to leave. This is the decision she makes, right? She's about to leave to go get the the car fixed. This guy, Tad, is being super annoying. Being like, I don't want to stay here, blah, blah, blah. I want to go with you and blah, 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 blah. And Donna knows the right thing to do is to leave him, right? And it's just like, oh, you know what? Fine, Tad, I'll take you. And it's like decision that she makes to take. Even though she knows it's a responsible decision, she thinks about the fact that the car might stop. The car is not doing very well. So she ends up taking them anyway. And that's another, not fair, but that's another decision that she makes there that kind of leads to that, to that mm-hmm. ending. Mm-hmm. 
Yes, that like whole fate. But do you want to talk about what scared Loki about this movie? I do. So let's talk about what he did while we were watching that movie in our bedroom. We had just went grocery shopping and put the groceries down on the floor. Look, our mistake. He, look, he's never done this. I continued to hear his, his collar jingling. jingling. Collar. Basically. We, we left toys out and I was like, okay, it's just him. But I was like, that just sounds too quiet. Like his Suspicious. jingling when he plays is usually a little more aggressive. And I was like, it's too chilled of a jingle. And I continued to hear it and hear it. Finally went to go check on him. We had bought LaCroix and he had chewed through the cardboard box of the LaCroix. <laughs> <laughs> like a lot of, a big chunk was missing. And I, I was swear, like, I, thought I, he, I thought he ate it. I was like, yes. no. And you were like, how much is safe? For him for to me. eat. <laughs> luckily, oh, I, man. Well, before he gets rabies, it attacks us. Yeah, luckily I found, <laughs> I found the pieces in the box. So he didn't eat any he of it. He didn't really eat it, but he chewed it all up. And we're like, really? Look, Even he chewed one of the, the LaCroix boxes, can. One of the cans that he chewed on, I just drank it right now. But it was... Yeah, I was like, dude, you've never done this, ever. What the hell? I'm over here coming out and hugging him. What's going on, little Cujo? And yeah, he this ate is the one something thing like you're little doing? Cujo. Yeah. Sorry. Did he function the can at all? No, I almost. thought he did, but he's got like little teeth marks. Yeah, the, the can. cans have little teeth marks on them. <laughs> <laughs> but oh, man. are you tougher than Cujo, Loki? No, Cujo would definitely kick your butt. Sorry, yeah, that wasn't Loki. a bigger growl than Cujo. So, you guys first. What would you rate this movie? Out of what's the scale? I know that Eric loves to play around with scales. So and... 5, 10, <laughs> 20. What's, what's, what's it today? It's at a 10. Is it at a 10? Yes. Oh, is it usually? Okay, fuck The drink's out of like, five. It's five. The movie's <laughs> at a 10. So, out of 10, I give the movie a five. Because I... I don't know. There was like... Some boring parts in the movie, I guess. And I notice I say I, I guess a lot. So just, you know. Edit that out. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to give it a five and a half. And I think partially I'm just being biased because, you know, reading the book makes me biased. But I feel like even having read the early Harry Potter books, the movie really surprised me and really impressed me. Wait. So I, I'm kind of basing it off of that. This one did not impress me. You just said, I read the early Harry Potter books. Is that what you meant to say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm comparing it to like reading the air. Like I read the first Harry Potter and the second one and then saw the movies when they came mm. out. And then I was like, oh, cool. Like this was actually really cool. Here, read Cujo. And I was like, oh, okay, let me watch the movie. Watch the movie. And I'm just like, that was kind of weak. Compared gotcha. To so you're saying like... Some books and movies stay closer to the source material, but Cujo was just like, not really. A little bit far off, yeah. 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 Like what, gotcha. what Eric said, like, yeah, of course, there's always more meat in the books. Like, that's easy to, like, that happens because you have more chance to work with it. But regardless, like, the Harry Potter movies are enjoyable, but this movie just was not that enjoyable. There are no dead dogs in the Harry Potter books. <laughs> <laughs> That's what makes them enjoyable. Yeah, no. exactly. <laughs> okay, so Eric, your rating of Cujo. Rating, I think I would say because I love Cujo and fuck everybody else and the book is better, I'd say a three. Really? That's yeah. still very low. Wow. Yeah. Fuck this movie. Yeah. I want it to be done better. That's what I was telling you earlier. Yeah, I would like to get the full story of the families. I guess I would give this film a 5 out of 10. It's hard, though. It's very much a movie of its time. Would you guys, at the end of the day, despite our ratings, would you say it's a scary film? If you're scared of dogs, yes, but no. Yeah, I would say no. I don't... I, I guess it's like, what is scary? Like, if people... like are scared of dogs it's like a situation of like you're being trapped and waited on for an attack by a dog like that's pretty eerie or like suspenseful a little bit horror because you don't have control i think I've, so i think it's i completely agree scary. it's a situational scary film like if i find yes. myself in this situation i'd be terrified yes. is it like scary like scenes in this movie scared me no no not really don't know if i could disarm a dog though loki could probably take me benny could take me oh and he's like yeah. what i don't even think i can disarm a cat but you know they have claws oh and stuff. 
Yeah, cats are a different story. Cats are fucking horrifying. I think I, think I have I want a better one. chance of disarming a dog than a cat. Yeah, Brenda does Probably. not have a good history with cats. She literally got mugged by cats in Mexico. <laughs> not mugged. You got mugged. The Ordner. way you described it, no. Ordner. That is mugged. I gotta yeah, hear this story. <laughs> they took your they money? They didn't take anything from me. They except my pride. Fear of cats. <laughs> except my pride. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're here for your pride, ma'am. Give it to us right now. Meow. <laughs> Cordner. My Cordner. <laughs> it took your dignity. <laughs> Do you remember In Search of Darkness talked about this movie where cats attack people? Oh, yeah. The cat's like the, the monster in the movie. <laughs> anyway, does that pretty much wrap things up for us here? I think it does. Is there anything you want to promote? <laughs> Actually, yeah. Animal Health Shelter. They're pretty good. They are in Huntley, Illinois. Yes, I believe they are a no-kill shelter. So if you're in the area looking for a forever friend, support them. Donate to them. I really had a positive experience. Probably if we got a couple more dogs, we'd go back to them. For sure. Yeah, so go support them. But as always, we hope you guys had a good time here. You can follow us pretty much anywhere at Shaken Out Scared Pod. Our email is Shaken Out Scared Pod at gmail.com. Our Twitter is Shaken Scared Pod. And you can support the show on Patreon. We'll name our next drink after you with mentions on our website where the drink will live forever. You can listen to us on all your favorite podcasting sites, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, Stitcher, a bunch of others. Give us a listen. Give us a follow. Enjoy this drink. Enjoy the Francisco variation of it. We'll post it on the website. Give us a like. Give us a review. Francisco, Brenda, have you reviewed us? My review depends on whether you guys are taking movie suggestions on your Gmail account. We are. We are. Oh, good to know. Fine. Yeah. So I will be filling your inboxes with movie recommendations. Thank <laughs> you. Please do. <laughs> yeah. Thanks again for being on the show, guys. Thanks, guys. Thanks a lot for having us. We had a really good time, as always. Oh, yeah. You guys. Awesome. Yeah, thank you. Okay, thanks. Bye. Bye.